You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming, and as some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you with another Let's Play episode of Echo. So, oh, last episode was October 27th. It's been a little while. Um, oh, good lord. Last episode, Leo started losing his cool, and he really flipped. So. Guys, let's get right back into it. I'm oh man, I am really, really nervous about this one. Oh my god, I, I hope Leo doesn't kill anyone. Oh, all right, guys, let's do it. All right. <clears throat> Leo's voice goes from an almost scream to a hushed whisper as he moves to the window, looking out into the night. He slides the window shut, then locks it. This is exactly what I was worried about. What? Inside, I'm relieved more than anything. For some reason, I'm positive that if Clint was still here, or if Leo had caught him in the act of trying to escape, I don't doubt he would have tried to shoot him. That's... Uh, has it been 30 seconds yet? That stupid fucking raccoon, thinking he knew it was best. Leo continues to peer out the window, his ears perked up. I know what the hell's best for us. Thinks he can just come in and tell everyone what to do. See what happens? I start to move back into the hallway, toward the kitchen, but Leo suddenly whirls around on me. His frown turns into a sort of, ugh. Oh, that's, oh, that's creepy. Oh, that's weird. Whew. Chills, man, chills. Just that sudden smile. Oof. Hey, Otter, are you okay? I don't say anything. I just stare at him. Otter. Vaguely, I can hear Carl clopping around uncertain uncertainly in the hallway, probably too afraid to get too close. I try to speak, then wet my lips. Y yeah Leo extends a paw. Come here. Did I scare you? I fidget with my paws. N n no Well, come on then. Slowly, I move into the wolf's room. Despite my dragging feet, my mind is racing, trying to decide what the hell is going on, and what the hell I'm going to do. Leo's lost it, there's no question about that. It's something that I've sort of known for the past day, ever since we found him in Duke's basement. And now it's getting worse. A lot worse. Still, I continue to move toward him, like I'm in some kind of dream. Soon, he's got me wrapped up in his arms, and, despite the warmth, despite the strength I feel in them, I don't feel good about it at all. I'm just scared. Chula. He breathes into my ear, sending shivers down my spine. I told you I'm going to protect you. I'm going to keep you safe. That's exactly what I'm going to do. He starts rocking me back and forth, shifting us around on his feet like we're doing some kind of half dance at prom. He's moved us around so that I'm looking at the door, and I can see Carl's horns, his eyes fearfully peering into the room. That raccoon. He wasn't good for you. G good for me? He helped me! Leo gives me a squeeze that almost knocks the breath from my lungs and that cuts me off. Maybe. Maybe not. I can see him acting strange, kind of like the others. The wolf continues to rock us back and forth as I continue to look over Leo's shoulders, seeing in Carl's eyes that this is definitely fucked up. I don't say anything else to Leo, worried about how he might take it if I keep trying to convince him that Kudzu was only trying to help us. I'm going to get you all out of here, like I should have done from the beginning, okay? He gives me a little shake when I'm silent, a little, when I'm silent a little too long. Okay. Okay. And he keeps rocking me like that for what seems like hours, and when we wake, and then, and when we make another revolution, and when we make another revolution, I can see that Carl's not there anymore. <clears throat> then I hear something. Soft at first, then louder and louder. Leo stops dancing with me. I can make out a rhythmic, dull, metallic sound accompanied by a horn. A train? TJ and Carl are standing at the back door, staring out into the night. Leo pushes past them, ears perked as he tries to see through the darkness. The train sounds incredibly close, almost like it's only feet away. Should we, should we go to it, like Clint said? Leo pauses, his nose twitching before he waves his paw at us. You guys stay here. I'm gonna go have a look. Leo. 
And just like that, the wolf disappears into the night, leaving us behind. I stare out into the night. So, so I guess Clint wasn't shitting us after all, huh? Yeah. All I can think about right now, though, is Kudzu. Did he hear the train right now? Was he on his way over there? I look to my right, towards Kudzu's house, only a few hundred feet away. Quietly, I start stepping outside. D Chase? Carl's voice behind me is timid, scared. I look back at him, able to make out the whites of his eyes in the darkness. TJ lurks behind him, staring at me as well, though far more stoically. I'll be right back. I just need to check on Kudzu. Everything that Kudzu has done for me up to this point, saving me multiple times, making sure I was doing okay, nursing me back to health. Hell, even helping me with my project before all this shit went down. I'm not going to abandon him. Just like, just like with Leo when he was imprisoned by Duke, I feel like it's my responsibility. Only this time the urge is even stronger. I have to make sure Kudzu makes it out of here like the rest of us. Carl, though, doesn't look so enthusiastic about that. I don't, I don't know if that's such a good idea. You saw Leo. Carl looks over my shoulder, and I do the same, worried that maybe the wolf was coming back. But all I see is darkness. I realize in that Carl is just as afraid of the wolf as I am right now. I swear. I'm only, I swear, I'm only going to be away for a few minutes. If Leo asks, tell him... I don't know, just tell him I needed some air. That won't... I don't wait for Carl to finish his sentence. My eyes slowly adjust, but it's too dark to really see any more than five feet. The amount of stars overhead is almost dazzling, but it's not enough to light. But it's not enough light to help me see. In fact, it's almost disorientating. The way the bright, the way the bright powder look of the sky clashes with the black horizon of the mountains. Focusing on it too much makes my stomach turn, and I turn my eyes down, trying to focus on the barely visible ground. And st whack! until my face slams right into something big, hard, and full of twigs. <clears throat> yeah, I really don't want to say that. I might get demonetized for that. I shout, whisper into my paws, covering my nose, afraid for a second that maybe I ran, all, I ran one of my eyes through. A quick but shaky examination of my fingers puts that fear at ease, though now I feel like my muzzle has gone flat into my face. That jolt had me feeling all the aches of my past two incidents with cars. I stand there in the dark for a moment, gathering my senses. It's almost completely silent now. The train, if it was a train, has passed us by at this point. The metallic clanks and rushing sound is far behind me. Standing in the silence, though, is starting to give me second thoughts. I'm pretty sure there aren't any trees between Leo and Kudzu's house. Did I get off track somehow? Something cracks a little ways ahead of me, and I freeze up, my ears twitching. I listen hard, trying to hear anything above the crickets. Okay, yeah, this was really fucking stupid. I remember that I'm not all that way. F I remember that I'm uh, blah. I remember that I'm not all that far away from Leo's house, and look back at the yellow squares of squares of windows in the distance. I should probably go back to reorient myself and try to get to Kudzu's house again. As I'm turning around, though, another crack behind me, followed by a muffled voice. Shit! I freeze at the voice. I open my mouth to try and quietly call out, but stop myself. I can't be sure. But it sounded like kudzu, a bit muffled and low-pitched. I decide to wait a while longer, with one foot pointed towards Leo's house. And then... This time the sound is right next to me, and I jump in the air. I make a run for the house, and immediately trip over several rocks, going face-first into the ground. I'm scrambling at the ground with my paws and feet when I hear the voice again. Whoa, whoa, Chase! I slump back to the ground in relief. Oh my god, Kudzu! What the hell are you doing? I feel the raccoon's paws feel over me, then pull me back up to my feet. I heard a train, then I saw someone. Are you okay? From the faint light of the stars, I can make out Kudzu's ears and the tip of his muzzle. My eyes have adjusted to the point where I can even see the mask in his fur. Yeah, I wanted to come get you, in case we were gonna try to hop the train. I look over my shoulders, trying to listen for the train again. A little late for that, huh? Well, yeah, but I didn't want to leave you behind. Ah. Uh, I rub my face where I hit the branch. Listen, I don't know what's going on with Leo, but maybe we can go back and try to talk. Kudzu shakes his head. Nah. He's... I don't think he's gonna listen. 
As much as I hate to admit it, Kudzu is probably right. Well, I'm not going to leave you out here after everything we went through. I see a glint of white teeth as Kudzu gives me a small smile. Wow. Well, thanks, man. But really, you should probably get back before he... At that moment, I realized something. Wait. What were you doing out here? You said you saw someone? Kudzu shifts slightly from one foot to the other. I thought I did, at least. Like, someone from the town, or... I think it was your friend. What? The, uh, the fox. Jenna. I thought Jenna was a coyote. Jenna? My eyes go wide and I turn back to the darkness, squinting. Where? Where did you see her? Uh, Kudzu turns to look with me, then takes a few steps forward. Well, I was going back to my trailer after the whole thing with Leo, then this fox girl just kind of jumped up from the side of my house. Where did she go? My heart's hammering in my chest right now as I strain to see her. Jen has been on my mind since the very beginning, and her absence has only become more prominent after finding the others. Well, I think she went off in that direction. Kudzu points into the darkness. I could hear her running off, but then the footsteps stopped, so I thought she might have stopped and hid somewhere. Come on, then. A motion Kudzu forward and stepped toward the blackness of the wilderness. Hold on, I was going to grab a flashlight. There's no way we're finding anything out there at this time of night. You go get them. I'll wait. Of course, I'm terrified of being left alone, but I'm also terrified of Jenna running away if I don't keep watch. I'm getting the feeling she might be under the same influence that Carl or TG had been earlier. You sure? Yeah, I want to stay here in case she comes out. I wave him away. Okay, but yell if something happens, alright? Okay. Kudzu goes in and comes out within less than a minute, though it feels way longer than that. While he was gone, I risked a few loud whispers of Jenna's name, but I didn't get any response. Pretty soon, a, pretty soon a beam of light is sweeping the dirt, sagebrush, and cacti as we slowly make our way in the direction that Jenna had run. Apparently it was through the backyard and out toward the desert. I'm worried that maybe she didn't stop running. Why was she running? Did she say anything? I whisper saw. Did she say anything? I whisper softly to Kudzu as I follow as I follow along with him, one hand on his shoulder. No, just looked up at me and took off. Looked terrified of something. I frown, my paw tightening a bit on the raccoon's shoulder. M maybe it's just because she doesn't know you, right? Maybe she was heading to Leo's place. Maybe. I try to focus on the sea of pale glow in front of me, the bright, cold light of the flashlight sucking the color out of the desert. The grays and whites all sort of blend together after a while, and the swinging motion of the beam starts to lull me into a weird hypnotic state. It's at this moment that I catch movement out of the corner of my eye on the right, where the light isn't currently pointed. I hear the sound of shifting dirt and gravel, immediately followed by a bizarre, high-pitched snarl that makes me gasp in horror. I actually even piss myself a little as I see a glint of white teeth. Kudzu tries to swing the beam back in the direction of the sound, and at the same time I try to pull him back with my paw on his shoulder. Whatever it is hits Kudzu hard, knocking him back and sending me stumbling away to land on my ass. The flashlight rolls away from the raccoon's paw and shines into my face, briefly blinding me. I can sense a loud, growling commotion right in front of me, along with the sound of Kudzu grunting. Numbly, I reach out and snatch up the flashlight, then turn it on the sounds. First, I see Jenna, her ears back, teeth bared, swinging her paws at a crumpled heap on the ground. That heap is Kudzu, and he's got his arms up in self-defense, snarling back, his eyes wide. Jenna! Just like that, the snarl drops from her face and her eyes snap up to mine. Ch chase But then the position is suddenly reversed as Kudzu grabs the fox by the wrist and practically barrel rolls. Now Kudzu sits on her back as he keeps a hold on her wrist. Wait! Stop! I rush over to him, grabbing Kudzu's upper arm, trying to pull his paw away from Jenna. It's okay! She's good! She recognizes me! Kudzu only hesitates for a moment before scrambling off the fox and backing away, breathing hard. Jenna quickly sits up, absentmindedly brushing off her shirt as she looks up at me. Oh my god, Chase! She says it in a hushed whisper, putting a paw putting a paw to her mouth. Jenna, are you okay? I reach down to help her up and she immediately goes in to hug me. I stand there awkwardly for a moment as she buries her face into my shoulder, gasping for breath. I'm not sure if she's crying or not. Are you okay? I ask again, patting her back awkwardly. Sorry, sorry, I'm I'm fine. Jenna steps back and, wipe, and wipes under her eye with the back of her paw. 
I just... I didn't know where any of you were. Where were you? Jenna looks alright for the most part, except for a bunch of dirt on her clothes and in her fur. But then I don't know if that's from, there, from, that's from before or after she was wrestling with kudzu. I... It's... I don't know. I was out in the desert and... It's still dark, obviously, but I can make out the frown on her face as she seems to struggle for words. Finally, Kudzu steps in. Hey, let's get to my trailer. We can talk it out in there, all right? Jenna silently nods, then seems to really focus on Kudzu. Wait, who are you? I step in for the raccoon. This is Kudzu. He's a friend. He saved me a bunch of times. That seems to be good enough for Jenna. With that out of the way, we all head back forward to the trailer. Quietly, Kudzu lets us into his trailer, opening the screen door slowly so that it doesn't creak. Go ahead and save it right here. He motions us inside, and Jenna follows in behind me, pressing close. I suppose she has good reason to be wary of the place. She doesn't really know Kudzu, and at this point, it's hard to even trust people that you do know. That you do know. Kudzu closes the door and slides the locks in place. Jenna stands next to me in the small living room area, arms folded tightly against her body like she's hugging herself. Hey, you, you want to sit down? I gesture at the recliner, which Jenna stares at for a few seconds. Um, I, I don't know. The fox's ears are twitching around and pointed straight up. I turn to the small love seat set against the wall instead. Maybe there, I can sit with you. After a few more moments of staring at the couch, Jenna finally nods. She walks stiffly over to the couch, looking at it for a moment before finally sitting down. I notice three clumped up patches of fur on the back of her neck, and it takes me a moment to realize that it's dried blood. Had someone attacked her? Had she hurt herself? Jenna still doesn't relax when we're settled, and is instead set, is instead set bolt upright, leaning hard against my shoulder. Much like her ears, her eyes are darting around, mostly over to the curtain, mostly over to the curtained window to our right. Meanwhile, Kudzu elects to sit in the empty recliner after turning it a little to face us. The scrapping sound it makes on the floor causes Jenna to jump. Kudzu pauses, blinking, and then settles back in the recliner. Sorry, I really should put a rug under this thing. <laughs> Jenna doesn't say anything and instead just looks back at the window. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Kudzu shifts awkwardly in the chair, then looks at me. I look at Jenna, trying to think of something to say. Jenna beats me to it. Do, do you know where the others are? TJ or Carl? Oh, yeah, yeah, they're, they're at Leo's place. Them and Leo. Jenna frowns at me. Then why are we here? Let's go. She starts to stand up, but I reach out a paw, grabbing her arm. She flinches and yanks away from me, standing up fully. Sorry, hold, just hold on a second. Uh, we... It, it's complicated. Why? Jenna takes a step back from me, folding her arms. The look in her eyes is worrying, like she's starting to not trust me. Look, Leo, he's kind of uptight right now. I guess I just wanted to give him some space. Give myself some space, really. Away from him. Kudzu shifts in his chair again. He kicked me out. Things got a little heated between us. Jenna looks at Kudzu, the deep frown still on her face. Why? Leo wouldn't do that without a reason. She looks back at me, as if wanting some sort of confirmation. I nod. Leo isn't really himself right now. I'm really worried about him. Can we go over there and talk to him? I open my mouth, but I pause, trying to think of the right way to say it. I... I don't know. Not right now. I'm not leaving Kudzu, so I'm going to have to think of a way to get Leo to calm down. I'm also considering just staying separate from him until we can get out of here, but I don't want to tell Jenna that. She looks stressed out enough as it is. Now that I think about it, I wouldn't be surprised if Leo was out there hunting for me right now. Odds are that he's going to come here eventually. Maybe. Maybe he jumped the train already. That reminds me, though. Oh, yeah, we think we found a way out. Really? Yeah, apparently a train goes through here once in a while. We're thinking we can hitch a ride on it. Jenna takes that in, then just nods. The silence drags out for a minute or two before I finally lean towards her again. It's okay. Just sit down and relax for a minute. She does so with even more hesitance than the first time, sitting on the couch cushion like it might be a landmine. So, uh, where were you these past few days? If you want to tell me, I mean. Juna stares at the floor, then shrugs. I don't really know. It's kind of a blur. I nod. Yeah, same. 
I guess it happened in... I guess it... I guess it happened two, three days ago? I don't remember, but everything was normal until TJ woke up. It was like he was in a trance or something. I wasn't sure what was wrong with him. I thought he might have been having a seizure. Then I thought he was in a psychosis of some kind. He left the motel and just started running, so I followed him. He ran all the way to the lake, and I was sure he was going to go in. But then he just stopped on the shore and stared at it. I caught up to him and tried to talk to him, but it was like I wasn't there. Nope. Alright guys, Alarm Chan is telling me that's enough spookiness for right now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. And until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!